we all know if you're in the grocery store and you're going and just buying, I mean, I don't know, rice or roni or something like that. I mean, all you gotta mm -hmm. do is look to see what's in there, look at the ingredients, go, do I really want that in my body? Can I pronounce that word that's on the box? <laughs> right, good um, point, right. You know, that, that's a big thing. I mean, you could also, I mean, a thing, if you wanna do something like that, a good way of looking at it is looking at that box and seeing maybe what the ingredients are and going, okay, I could possibly make that. Go get mm -hmm. your rice, go to the spice aisle, go get some, you know, the dried spices or go get some fresh herbs and try to make it yourself that way. Got a lot of love. Yeah, that's for sure. Got music and movies and friends and medicine. Yeah, is the show for me. Welcome to the Windy Love Ed Show, sponsored by Kara's Healthcare and the Relevant app. We don't dispense medical advice, and all your health choices are your own. The opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily those of our producer, A Edge Productions. This is season six, episode six. How can I make the foods I like healthier? I'm Wendy Love Edge, and this is my co host, Brandon Lee. You know, you just have to add carrots to your Cheetos. It's really that simple. We could just end the episode right now. It's just, that's it. You gotta have the bag that looks like it's junk food and then you put vegetables in it. That's oh, right. right. Like, just to kind of trick your mind a little bit, you know? Right. <laughs> well, well I, I, I'm sure we talk about this. We have, you said you got, we got some amazing guests today that uh -huh. really chefs that really, um, you know, when a chef, when a cook can kind of get down to the ingredients of what is healthy, it just, it always seems so much better when someone else is cooking you the food. So I'm sure it's going to be awesome to watch him uh, do his thing and tell us about it. Yeah, um, we, uh, we talked about uh, several different things. And, uh, but I know that you are quite a cook yourself. I, I don't, should I call you a chef? I don't know. I'm not, it... Well, hey, listen, I don't own a jacket. <laughs> uh, I've worked in professional kitchens. I've worked in, um, you know, I worked with pizza and I was at a country club for a while doing the grill and all the pizza and or all the food not just pizza but uh -huh. everything so yeah I mean not only that but hey I'm older now so I've been cooking every day of my life you know I really do love to cook um as everyone kind of pushes me to like open a restaurant or something like, no I just like to cook for myself and it's a it's more of a hobby mm -hmm. uh, for me and I you know a lot of I think people that's like to cook a lot. Yeah, yeah, I think that's important though. I see what you post on social media and just the visual appeal is uh, you know, it it's it's fun and exciting. It's 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 a great hobby. And then you can enjoy the enjoy the flavor of it. Right. You know? And then you enjoy the food. <laughs> yes. Which is the best part. And you know, um, and I also like to encourage people, I, I put this on my page yesterday and um that you should definitely not go to restaurants every night. You know, I think mm -hmm. it, you should save those for special occasions. And I know we all get to that point where you're eating too much fast food or just eating too much bad food. Right. And you know it, like your body knows it, you feel it, you kind oh, of yeah. feel down about it. And you're like, man, mm -hmm. I got to get another healthy meal in. Right. Um, you just for feel better sure. when you have healthy meals. For sure. It's good to know what's going in there. So, you know, I've been collecting information about why is it so important to eat healthy, right? Because you hear people say that like off the cuff, well, we should eat healthier, but what does that even mean? And why should we, right? <laughs> why right. not eat, and you know? It is also, doesn't it seem like something that was healthy last week and now it's not healthy? You well, know? that happens too, for sure. Um, right. In like fact, I was just, 
I was just watching, of course, Frasier, um, yes. an old episode, and uh, the dad was chatting with someone his age, like in their 70s, right? And they're talking about how, you know, they grew up eating butter and eating um, the st all the stuff that people say, don't eat that now, and they're still aging gracefully and doing well, right? Right. <laughs> so where is the line, and, and what do we mean by healthy, and how do we know, you know? I think, you know, that old... Uh, that old adage, you know, you are what you eat is really true, you know? It, is. it totally uh, is. I mean, you know how you feel if you eat a bunch of fried foods. Um, a lot, I really do. I'm one of the believers that I think everyone is lactose intolerant. Uh, <laughs> it could be. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I tolerate it because I love ice cream and I love all these things. But I think to a certain point, we all are, you know, we shouldn't be drinking, uh, taking and in, ingesting that much dairy all the time. So, mm -hmm. We've talked about this in the past. Everything in moderation is uh, is really the key. And getting the workouts in and f using your food as fuel, mm -hmm. not just a, you know, a food to suffice, you know, your cravings. You know? Right, right. Well, it turns out, it, you know, eating a little bit healthier really does support healthy brain function, keeping your skin and teeth and bones healthy. Um, you know, and, and imp improves your mood and, you know, boosts your immunity, which we're all concerned with today, right? right. <laughs> you know, so there are good reasons to make it a little healthier. But with this show, you know, I, I really wanted uh, people to understand that they can eat what they like. Because if, if you start a so-called diet, and you're not eating what you enjoy, it's probably not going to last, you know, the levy is going to break eventually, right. you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, and I, you know, I've done these really hardcore, like low carb diets, keto, uh, keto mm -hmm. diets, and, um, and you can do it to a certain point, but I also feel like I'm starving myself at a certain point where I, I don't even feel good. Right. And I think the overall part of, of a diet is something that you, your body jives with your, you, um, you feel the energy from it and you're using your food as fuel. You know, uh, I don't think everyone tries to make a very tasty meal every every meal that they get. And, and I know a lot of people are guilty as this, of this is like, well, I had a really bad meal, so I'm just going to skip a meal. Oh, you know, right. like, mm -hmm. a lot of people think that's the way to do it. And it's, it's really, you know, I think prepping and making sure that you know what you're going to eat, that always helps as well. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are just blindly going into their day. They don't know what they're going to eat for lunch or dinner or, right. you know, so yeah, having a little bit of a plan uh, in your diet is very helpful. Yeah, even, you know, if you're going to hit the grocery store or better yet, you know, shop locally, go to the farmer's market, kind of that. have a plan in mind, make a list of what you need in the house and, and plan a couple of meals for during the week. That way you're ready um, and you have the ingredients and you can, you can make something you like and, and keep it a little healthier, you know? Right. And, you know, we're always proud of our meals that we cook ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. I, and I think a lot of people are like, hey, I've got kids, you know, they don't like these things. Incorporate your kids into cooking. I promise you, if you have them cut some things up with a safe knife or to help you cook or those things, those things will just, I'm telling you, it'll help their entire life and their diet. I know that when you learn to cook, you're so proud of your meals and, you know, you want to eat them. So it's not like the, you know, if a kid's like, oh, well, they don't eat that stuff. Well, they will if they're involved with the cooking process and proud of what they're making. So I think mm -hmm. that's a big part of it. And um, I also love to make meals bigger than what I can eat in one sitting and then put them in my little prep containers. Mm -hmm. And it's a perfect lunch for tomorrow. Like sometimes I eat my dinner. I'm like, man, I'm looking forward to that, you know, for lunch. Right, tomorrow right. Already. <laughs> right. So, um, that, that's really yeah. good advice. Yeah. I, um, because then you, when lunchtime comes, you're not just, oh, I'm just going to stop at this fast food place because I don't have yeah. anything ready. Exactly. And it's so quick, you know, the, the, you can get really inexpensive packaging uh, that's, you know, you can use over and over again, put in the dishwasher. That's what I use. And it's little compartments. So you're not getting all your food mixed up. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can throw that in the microwave and it's ready in four or five minutes. And wait, wait, are you, gone. are you one of those that can't mix it on the plate? <laughs> I, I can mix, I can mix, but <laughs> it matters, doesn't it? Like, especially if it's like leftovers, mm -hmm. I kind of want it, you know, I can mix some stuff up and I love to do that, but yeah, no, they can touch, they, I'm not one of those people where they can't touch, <laughs> but like, you got to think about like reheating food and you kind of want to keep it, you know, a little bit separate. And, and you know, I think people have this weird premonition or or 
phobia of leftovers. I know right. people that just don't eat leftovers. And if you call them leftovers, you're not, you're not going to eat them. If you're prepping, you're mm-hmm. putting that meal right into something and closing it up. I think um, it gives you more of a chance to uh, maybe a better thought of, hey, I'm, I'm making meals for tomorrow or uh, for that's, the next day. That's really important. You know, the words matter. They're powerful. And that word leftovers is like, oh, I don't, I don't want those sloppy seconds. Right. <laughs> you know, I want a meal. <laughs> right. right. And, and uh, one of my favorite things to do is in the kitchen is make a really simple thing on Monday, like, you know, mm-hmm. some baked chicken or something that's really simple and some broccoli or some really things, but you know, that's delicious by itself. If you do it, you know, season it correctly and do the things that you need to do. Um, and then the next day, you can turn it into something else, maybe a chicken stir fry or um, or a Mexican dish, you know, burritos, mm-hmm. tacos. And so you're using that same meal that you had the day before and you've now transferred, uh, trans- just totally uh, transformed it into something even better or uh, more ex- less expensive right. because you're mm-hmm. using that same meal from the day before. So right. that's always part of the process. I think that if you can take simple and just keep on you know, making different things out of the uh, proteins and the items, it really does help you. I promise it's, it's definitely helped me tremendously. Yeah, that's great. Do you have any recipes that you love that you've adapted to make a little bit healthier? You know, I, I like to use healthier things always, you know, like if I can get away with not putting, making more carbs in something or putting sugar in something, I'll do it for the most part. And, um, and that can involve, instead of using white sugar, you can use honey, you know, you can use other things that are sweeteners that are more natural sweeteners like fruits or, um, mm-hmm. or other things like that. Uh, there are definitely way better health, healthier options than say white flour and, mm-hmm. and sugar. So right. um, I think as Americans, we, everything's got sugar in it. Like you would, you so would believe true. it, like, like even the dinners have all of yes. the sugar in them. Yes. So um, once you mm-hmm. start adapting to that, meals start tasting better. i I, I've noticed this a uh, hundred times over using um, olive oil instead of butter. Uh, they, it actually does make a difference health wise and taste wise. I think mm-hmm. it, it makes yeah, it good. Th- those are all great tips. Well, coming up next, uh, I had a chance to chat with Dr. Egypt Ireda uh, about uh, her ideas for keeping it healthy when you're cooking. Joining me now is Dr. Egypt Iradia. She is a plant-based medical doctor, metaphysical wellness coach, and naturopathic doctor. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. I understand you're also a poet and creative, and I love that blend with wellness. Uh, That's partly what we do on the show, so I'm so glad you're here. Um, (laughs) Thank you. Uh, So your mission is to empower people to live healthier, calmer, connected, and conscious lives. Yes. I love your mission statement. (laughs) Um, So how does food fit into that? Um, I think food fits in powerfully because how I see food, it goes very deep. So essentially, I see food as nourishment and what we take into our bodies nourishes our minds nourishes our physical body nourishes even our spiritual or etheric bodies and also feeds into our consciousness so the 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 kinds of foods we consume it can play a big part in actually the energy we use to carry through in our life so for me it actually runs very deep than just like on the you know superficial eating level so yes <laughs> yes yeah it's it's more than just taking in something it's it's got a whole larger meaning around it okay. so uh, in this episode we're talking about how can we make the foods that we enjoy the foods that we like a little bit healthier but as we communicated for this interview I saw there's really a lot more to that than just maybe making some healthier food choices or adding healthier ingredients. And you mentioned several things I'd like to talk about today. 
Perfect. So uh, food preparation is definitely one of those things. So if people want to make things a little healthier, what changes could they make uh, in regard to food preparation? Um, for example, it's just being more conscious, for uh, instance, of things like the oils that we use to prepare our foods. <laughs> if we do use oils, just being aware of different ways we can prepare foods that can cut back on the oil. For I mean, I'm not even talking about the quality of the oil. I'm going to get into that, but just the actual oil itself. So instead of if a recipe calls for deep frying, perhaps consider what I call oven baking the food. So mm -hmm. um, I am like, I do encourage plant-based eating, but even for people who aren't on a plant-based diet, you know, rather than deep fry the chicken, perhaps bake it for a long period of time and use the oil like on the surface of it and just it will take longer, but overall um, it will be healthier because you've not like, you know, completely soaked it in oil. What are the types of oils people should choose for that? One thing I would say, if possible, people should avoid a lot of the, I call them newer oils, you know, that you see in more on the market, things like safflower oil, things mm -hmm. like canola oil, which essentially canola oil in terms of the farming practice of it, it, it was essentially like a man-made hybridized type oil. When you look at our evolutionary biology, it's not an oil that like we've been exposed to for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And I think when we introduce these new foods into our um, everyday eating or cooking practices, the body takes some kind of adjustment because genetically we're almost not fully wired to process that kind of oil. So just cutting down on these new oils like safflower oil, canola oil, they're, you know, the research has shown that they're very, um, inflammatory so they encourage a lot of like inflammation essentially a lot of chronic illness comes down to inflammation in the body only at different sites <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yes. so if you have inflammation in the brain can give you brain fog if you have inflammation in your digestive tract you can have digestive troubles bloating aches and pains cramping things like that so essentially we want to reduce these more pro-inflammatory oils and maybe consider substituting them with healthier oils like the olive oil, the coconut oil, um, that's a good choice. What is food combining? Essentially, different food types have different rates or speeds, if you like, at which they are broken down and digested and absorbed into the body, right? For example, we have fruits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so fruits are very easy for the body to um, break down to digest and to absorb, you know, in their final molecules into the body. They're, they're the, the, to be digested and absorbed. And they have a different almost composition of enzymes that are needed um, to break it down that the body produces. So if someone has say a fruit salad, you know, combination of pineapples, banana, different things, that could be broken down within the, the body within like 30 to 40 minutes, fully absorbed, fully like broken oh, down wow. into spinal molecules. Uh -huh. But then um, if we take grains, like complex grain, complex starches, for example, um, let's say brown rice, even oatmeal, or like the, um, the root, root vegetables, the yams, sweet potatoes, well, not so much sweet potatoes, but more like the potatoes, because sweet potato mm -hmm. actually is broken down rather quick those foods take a longer time for the body to break it down. They have a different, if you like, milieu of enzymes that are needed to break them down. Mm -hmm. So they could take up to two hours. Oh, <laughs> wow. You, that's if I'm talking of mono meals, if you eat them on their own. But then most people, we don't have mono meals. We mix foods up. Mm -hmm. So where the food combining um, comes into it is that like if you think of it if you mix a food it takes say 20 minutes to be maximally digested and absorbed with a food it takes two to three hours to be maximally digested and absorbed and they're all in one meal sitting mm. in your tummy right. we're giving the body a lot of work in mm -hmm. terms of it will need two kind of different enzyme subsets to break those foods it will lead to some foods. And for example, if you combine fruits with um, complex grains or starches, what happens is because the starches take a lot longer to digest and the, the fruits have already 
almost being pre-digested and fully broken down, mm. but they're, they're being slowed down in terms of their absorption. Hence, we get things like the, the part of the fruit not being like fully unbroken down, it starts to almost ferment. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a slow fermentation process, it ferments, and that leads to bloating, that leads to the feeling of brain fog after we eat certain foods because it's not fully digested. And so food combining just, it, it's a, a lot of things in life in it, as well as eating comes down to awareness. Just, you know, we're, we're talking about people making the foods they like healthier. How can they determine what to combine with what to be have the body be most efficient and get all the nutrients out of the food? Sure. So I would say there are a few ways. One, again, it comes down to the awareness, like to not make it too hard on yourself. I think everybody's given deep, intuitive awareness. And mm -hmm. sometimes we have to just um, slow down and tap into that to actually listen to our bodies. Our bodies are always speaking. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. So if we have, say, regular, a certain regular meal, say we have like I don't, mac and cheese, we, we like that and we have that often, just listen to your body. Like, does it, do you feel, you know, a few hours after one or two hours, do you feel enlivened? Do you feel sluggish? Do you feel brain fog? Do you feel like, oh, that was okay to digest? That in itself is an innate intelligence. Like I tell my mm -hmm. clients, you don't have to go to medical school. You don't have to be a physician to be able to read your body signals. These are mm -hmm. gifts from the divine that every, everyone can tap into when we have more awareness. So I would say awareness is, is one way. Mm -hmm. um, another thing again, just kind of to really keep it simple would be like when you have fruit, like a large fruit-based meal, try to have that on its own. So things like mm -hmm. combination fruits, like in smoothies, try to have that like away from like, you know, it's because um, I'm from the UK. So we have our traditional English breakfast, which is like eggs and cereal and fruit juice and bacon. Right. Which, All together. I, yeah. I know. It's yeah. a complete disaster. <laughs> <laughs> a <laughs> lot of cultures do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. So it's just that like, perhaps if you do enjoy your morning juice or smoothie, Maybe have that and then wait for an hour later to have the rest of your breakfast. If you are a breakfast person, some people are not, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be one thing. And just to keep in mind that fruits take the less, least amount of time. I'd say the next up the ladder would be like complex carbohydrates and starches. Mm -hmm. They take a couple more hours. So try and keep that together. But then you have things like um, carbohydrates that are present in vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. You know, leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables. And what those are, things like our cabbage, um, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, those actually combine quite well with grain. So things like pasta and rice can go well with those starchy, veg more starchy vegetables. They, they, they don't interfere too much with each other. So those can go well together. And leafy greens can actually be combined with fruits oh. because yes, the leaves are broken down much more quicker. So things like your lettuce can be thrown into your smoothie and it won't be a, a fruit combining mayhem if you like. So those are just right. a couple of like um, ways or tips. <laughs> uh -huh. Excellent. Well, this has been so enlightening. Thank you so much. Uh, how can people get in touch with you? Thank you. Well, um, all my information can be found through my website, which is www.manifestinalchemy.com. There I have like my different healing offerings and other things with my creative work and things that I do. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me here today, Dr. Egypt. Thank you, Wendy. I really appreciate um, the work that you are putting out there. I've checked uh, through your material and I really appreciate what you're doing and offering to the world. Oh, thank you. It's my honor and pleasure. Thank you again. Thank you. Joining me now is Chef Michael Weinstein, the Dreadhead Chef. He has been in the culinary arts scene for over 20 years. He is the CEO of Rebel Dreads Corporation, which contains several lines of products, including food infused with CBD. Welcome to the show, Michael. Uh, glad to be uh, speaking with you again, Wendy. Thank you so much for having me again. Yes, absolutely. We spoke on Weed Speak, and it's great to have you here on the Wendy Love Ed Show. So this show is about 
making the foods we eat uh, a little bit healthier, uh, the foods that we enjoy. And uh, I, I wanted to start off by talking about cooking at home. Um, you know, a lot of people use processed food. What are the pluses and minuses to that? Well, I mean, cooking at home, obviously you can, you know, make what you want. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything, you know, going out or anything like that, uh, which is a benefit. If you don't like to cook or clean at home, obviously that's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. But um, you can definitely, by cooking at home, you can you know, eliminate, you know, going to what chain restaurants use in their food. And a lot of them use, you know, a lot of the bigger chains, it's all made in the commissary. It's all got preservatives in it. So mm -hmm. how to eliminate those um, is, is, is really the best thing to do is by cooking at home and mm -hmm. going and get the ingredients. You know, I know uh, a lot of people, you know, unfortunately with lesser income, it's very difficult to cook at home mm -hmm. um, by going and get fresh fruits and vegetables. It's very difficult uh, because of a, a, you know, just a monetary issue. Right. But for, for anyone that can, or for those that are the lower income, that, you know, give it a start giving it a try, you know, mm -hmm. really, if you have a space to grow your own garden, do something like that if you can, to at least be able to get some of those fruits and vegetables right. uh, that you want. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, if, we all know if you're in the grocery store and you're going and just buying I mean, I don't know, rice or or something like that. I mean, all you gotta mm -hmm. do is look to see what's in there, look at the ingredients, go, do I really want that in my body? Can I pronounce that word that's on the box? <laughs> right, good uh, point, right. You know, that, that's a big thing. I mean, you could also, you mean a thing, if you wanna do something like that, a good way of looking at it is looking at that box and seeing maybe what the ingredients are and going, okay, I could possibly make that. Go get mm -hmm. your rice, go to the spice aisle, Go get some, you know, the dried spices or go get some fresh herbs and try to make it yourself that way. I mean, it's a whole nother aspect of doing it. You'll cut out the preservatives that are in the products. Right. Um, like, I mean, look at bread. You, know, you can buy bread without preservatives. You mm -hmm. have to eat it. You know, you just can't sit around for three months. You've got to eat it. Mm -hmm. So Right. That's a good point. If we buy fresh, it may not be as expensive as someone might think. But, but it's to eat when you purchase it rather than thinking it's going to sit around in the house and you'll be able to use it for several weeks. Exactly. I mean, it just depends what store you go to. Um, you know, during the, the warmer months when farmers markets are more available, you know, maybe look at going to some of those and getting the, you know, supporting your local farmer, uh, your local rancher, you know, right. you mm -hmm. know, getting eggs like that is a kind of a good way. You know, the eggs will cost more but it's a better egg. Mm -hmm. You know, if the yolk is very yellow, that means that chicken is eating the right stuff and not just being force fed essentially. Oh, oh, so, nice. That's good to know. Yeah. In the processed food too, it seems like there's so much high fructose corn syrup. That doesn't seem like it's very healthy for us. Um, you know, there is a, there's a documentary I watched. It's been uh, a good amount of time called King of Corn. And mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, it's probably, 10 plus years old, maybe, but it really explains high fructose corn syrup. And mm -hmm. even though you know, it's a little bit dated now, but still it's eye opening of what, how it's made. And, you know, in my belief, you know, since the fifties when fast food and high fructose corn syrup sort of came hand in hand with each other. Mm -hmm. And it really has, you know, seen the obesity in America has increased Mm -hmm. since high fructose, high fructose corn syrup has been introduced into our diet. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah. So right. you can fight against that by yeah. cooking it yourself. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about some recipes that you, you could adapt to kind of make them a little healthier. Um, I think we were talking uh, recently about chicken soup. That's yeah. kind of a staple in Jewish homes like we grew up in, right? <laughs> it um, is. It is. Yeah, it's I mean, really nourishing is, though, isn't yeah. it? It's super nourishing. And Something so simple about it is, you know, you go to the store and you get, you know, your your broth that's already, you know, unless it's getting organic, but if you still get organic, you've got to look for stuff that's not, doesn't have salt in it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them, they add salt to it. So when I make chicken soup, what I do is I make a chicken stock first. And I use, say I'm getting the whole chicken, depends how much soup you want, two chickens, with the whole chicken, I break that chicken down. I keep the bones, I keep the wings, you know, and I make my chicken stock with that. 
-hmm. then once I had my chicken stock made in the chicken stock, you, know, you got onions, carrots, celery, um, thyme, bay leaves, parsley stems, usually black peppercorns, and mm -hmm. you just let it simmer. I mean, it takes like four hours. You strain it out. You got a nice stock. You don't need any salt to it. So mm -hmm. say you do make a chicken stock. We call it, um, we like the, we call it chicken glace. So it's basically, you take that chicken stock and you put it in a pot and you start reducing it and reduce it and reduce it. I mean, you need like, say you take a gallon and reduce it into a pint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can actually then put that in the fridge and it'll almost just because of the gelatin, natural gelatin in there, it'll almost make like a, looks like jello. You know, oh, mm -hmm. then you can cut that into cubes and store that in your freezer. And then when you need chicken stock in something, you can take water, add that little all fresh natural bouillon and put in the water. You've got chicken stock again. Oh my gosh. That's, I did not know that. That is news people can use. Now, what about um, spaghetti? Because a lot of people eat a lot of carbs, which isn't necessarily good for us, right? right. How can we adapt that? Spaghetti squash pretty easy easy uh, easy know, fix pretty, pretty easy um you can do you know you can do zucchini noodles you can do uh, uh squash noodles mm -hmm. i mean there's other things you can do and uh, you know when my fiance and i when we when we did the whole 30 a while back you know mm -hmm. it was like oh you know we did our first time with the spaghetti squash like pasta and it was like it was you know it was, it was like almost like eating spaghetti without mm -hmm. you know just the noodle aspect of it right and you know you can make your own sauce. I mean, yeah. onions, garlic, herbs. I mean, it's really, it, it's not as hard as everyone thinks it is. It's just time. It's time consuming. Mm -hmm. so, There's something nice though about making your own food for yourself and or for your family. If, if you've got other people in the home, right. it kind of uh, takes you away from the digital, the devices and doing something productive and healthy for yourself and, right. and your family, you know? Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people will, you know, be at their house and the communication, everyone's looking at their phone. Yes. And, and, right. and, 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 well, well, that's not much of a, uh, a conversation going on there at all. Right. Um, and, uh, it could be healthier even just to spend time together cooking and then eating it, you know, exactly. Um, exactly. I wanted to talk a little bit about CBD in the food is I love your products. Um, <laughs> but at home, you know, is it, is it, uh, helpful or healthy to add CBD tincture to food or what are your thoughts about that? I mean, you know, people can, um, you know, even though I make food products that have CBD in it, I'm still not, not every single thing that I make every single day of the week, I'm putting CBD in. Right. Um, right. I mean, it just becomes sort of do, do I really, do I need that in there? Do I not need that in there? I mean, but yes, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, when to add it, you know, if you're using flour, it's got to be decarbed and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, everything has to be infused ahead of time. Um, but I mean, yeah, you could essentially take a tincture and, you know, put on top of stuff. That way it's mm -hmm. going to get absorbed into, into you, as, as you know. Um, I mean, with some of my product, you know, like with the salsa I make, the dessert salsa, you know, for a kid, you know, we, you could actually put it in yogurt and they could get their daily cbd dose that way oh nice right so, yeah that salsa that you make is delicious it's kind of you. a treat for me so you know as a diabetic i couldn't sit and eat the right. jar but but if i decide i'm gonna splurge a little bit and have some it's so delicious <laughs> um you. you know and i think you know that's an important point too you know people deny themselves a lot in the name of like trying to be healthier right you know what are your thoughts about that you know, it is okay to go and, you know what, I, I want, I, I want fried chicken tonight, you, mm -hmm. you know, and you've been eating healthy for two weeks. Well, you know what, reward yourself, you know, yeah, look right. it as a reward to yourself. I've done so good this whole time. I want a reward for myself. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like, you know, the dog treat, you know, it's the same sort of principle. <laughs> right. You've done so good for yourself. Give yourself a treat. I mean, mm -hmm. it's okay. Right, yeah. right. I think it's important to do those things. And in an earlier segment in the show, Dr. Egypt talked about a different way to make a fried chicken like um, baked by baking it. But sometimes you just want the real thing. Um, it feels good. You do it exactly. as long as you don't keep going. 
exactly i mean it's you know you know you haven't had dessert in in two weeks and you just like god i just just want some ice cream well go get some you're doing your you know you're eating well you're exercising you know um you know when we're trying to be healthy actually 80 percent is your diet Mm -hmm. so absolutely i know we we, Mm -hmm. we, you know we could we talked a little about this but i had a, a really good i had a good friend and um, at the age of 42, right after New Year's Eve, he suffered a massive heart attack. Gosh, um, so did sorry. not obviously did not make it. Mm-hmm. And the guy was a runner. He would swim. He would bike. He would do triathlons. Mm-hmm. He was his diet was awful, absolutely awful. Mm-hmm. So he was trying to exercise away his diet. It can't mm-hmm. be done. It yeah, it seems not. like it all works hand in hand, you know, it, it um, I know for myself too, you know, when I am focused on positive thinking and exercise right. and eating well and cannabis um, and right. it all works together, you know, um, and you can't skip that step. I, I agree. I think food is really essential. Right. And, and, you know, food's been around with, you know, you know, interaction. I mean, I know for, for, you know, you and I growing up being in a Jewish community or household, mm-hmm. you know, food's a huge thing. Yes. And I'm sure both of us, <laughs> yes. know, I call it, I call it a, you know, Eastern European soul food is what we would eat. You know, cook, everything is extremely heavy and rich. Yes. You know, that's <laughs> the diet that we, you know, mm-hmm. my grandparents would have, and I'm sure your grandparents would have. Yes. Because that's what they ate. But now, you know, modern times, how to, you know, how to sort of, change that Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit it doesn't always have to be those heavy heavy foods as much well this has been great you've had so many wonderful tips how can people get in touch with you we got a dreadhead chef facebook page um that's Mm -hmm. always a good way to me instagram it's rebel dreads corp um that's always a good one and then an email to get a hold of me is going to be ask a s k u s at rebeldreadscorp.com. Great. Thanks so much for joining me. You're welcome. Well, what great information from Dr. Egypt and also from the Dreadhead Chef. It's so true. All the processed food has high fructose corn syrup. If that's that's reason enough to try and cut most of it out of your diet. That's right. And I think there's versions of all sorts of different foods that you love that don't have that stuff in them. And, Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, don't be scared of the kitchen. And I think that there's um, all sorts of possibilities and you need to go try them. And now a lot of people are, Wendy, are scared of the dishes. (laughs) <laughs> that it involves with oh all yes of this cooking you know uh-huh. so I understand that too I think um, I found that the best way to do it is clean while you're going I was gonna just say that so I learned when I was really young from my mom to just keep cleaning as you go and then you don't yes. end up with the, this big mess at the end right and one another great one unload the dishwasher Mm, while you're waiting i always i mess Uh this one up all the time unload the dishwasher and so while you're going you can take those dishes and put them right into the dishwasher oh uh, right okay out of sight out of mind Mm -hmm. uh and then you can run that thing after everything it's and i also use uh so i don't use so many pans the cast iron i mean i have cast Mm -hmm. iron uh three cast irons for for all the cooking so you know i was i was iron deficient like my whole life and my mom did not use an iron skillet all I did was add using an iron skillet every day, and I don't have that problem anymore. That's that's amazing. That is one thing that it does. You can kind of get your uh, your supplement of iron doing that, and especially if you're cooking, you know, three four times a week, and you're cooking on that thing, it's it really does it really does make a difference. And I think the cooking is better anyway. So yeah, for sure. Uh, so so have you been watching anything this week? You know, I have been watching. I've tried to make it a point to watch something and I got something cool, Wendy. So mm-hmm. there's this show on Netflix and maybe a lot of people have seen it already, but it's called Murderville. Mm-hmm. And it's got Will Arnett in it. And mm-hmm. so what it is, is he's an actor like detective and he has a guest on the show that has to figure out the who's the murderer. Oh, how and fun. So I love like that kind of thing. Like a backup detective, you know, uh-huh. like a assistant detective. And, but they don't know anything about it, but they are also, they don't know anything about the script. So 
when they go into it, they have to find the murderer, all ad lib, uh, nice. and there's comedians and all sorts of people in it. I saw the one, the first episode with um, with Conan O'Brien in it. And it was absolutely hilarious. So I bet it was. If you, if you want to sit around uh, with your buds and laugh a lot, you're definitely in for a treat with Murder Bill. It's uh, definitely two buds up for you guys that like to laugh because it is absolutely a riot. Wonderful. So where where is, uh, what format is that on? This is on Netflix. Okay. So you can watch it on Netflix now. It is available. And I believe all the episodes are out right now for at least season one. So. Uh, Excellent. I'm definitely going to check that out. <laughs> if you're a Will Arnett fan, he kills it in this. He's so funny in it. So uh, yeah, definitely worth a watch. Awesome. Well, I've been watching The Gilded Age, which, um, you know, I love historical uh, shows that kind of show you what was happening at that time and it well it makes stuff too. yeah it makes me mad actually the way women are treated and uh but it, it really kind of shines a light on the clash between old and new new york at that time um it's definitely worth the watch i would definitely give it a bud it's on hbo max and uh, cynthia nixon is in it and and it kind of shows her in a different kind of character and I'm, i've been enjoying that too you know, those those historic shows like that, I, it always brings you back. I really do like those things as well. It's just one of the, it's so interesting to watch uh, what it used to be like. And even mm -hmm. like what you're talking about, like stuff that would not fly today at all. <laughs> right. You know, like, I mean, you know, it, it, how they're treated is one thing. Like they can't even be out alone. They have to have someone with them, you know, by the way society is. However, it does also show the power uh, that the women have on the men kind of behind the scenes. So that's that's interesting too. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's definitely true. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, coming up next, Dr. Brian Nickel will pair a cannabis strain with our musical guest. I'm Dr. Brian Nickel, your cannabis expert for CannabisExpertMD.com with a music and cannabis pairing for the Wendy Love Ed Show. Wendy's musical guest this week is Low Fuzz out of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, vocals and guitar in this band are performed by Low Fuzz. Uh, Peter Bawa, he is playing the bass, and on drums is Eddie Ortz. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information on this band, easily available online, so I'm just going to kind of read you what the band said about themselves here. To quote them directly, Jonathan is on a quest to unite with his love Scarlet. Until Jonathan and Scarlet can create a portal to a parallel universe, the only way they can experience each other's company is through the mental realm by puffing on sweet joy. That's a beautiful green plant that grows free on the land. Well, I think we know what we're talking about there. I don't know about how free it grows on the land, but uh, I think we're talking about cannabis here. Now, I listened to I Want by Jonathan and his stories. After reading the band's description, I wasn't really too sure what to expect, but uh, I was met with a really fun, kind of a bluesy, kind of a song very similar to something you might hear from Reverend Horton Heat. For this uh, I decided I was looking for a fun party strain that will get you up with the band and help Jonathan open up that portal. I selected Natural State Medicinals Apple Sherbert. Apple Sherbert is potent at 19.9 percent .9 total THC. I selected based on the cannabinoid and terpene profiles available to me Natural State Medicinals Apple Sherbert. Apple sherbet is potent at 19.9% THC. How much CBD do you think is in there, Mr. Producer? Trace. Yes, sir. Trace CBD, as we find in many of the strains today. Looking at the terpene profiles, we always do to determine the kind of effects this is going to have. It's a relatively average strain at about 1.04% total terpenes. It is myrcene dominant at 0.33%. Beta caryophyllin is up next at 0.2%, 26%. With pining at 0.20%. There is a little bit of a showing of linalool, limoline, hemoline, and terpinoline right at the 0.08 to 0.04 percentage, to where it just barely counts as having an effect. Now, apple sherbet should give you a fast cerebral type of effect as the myrcene and uh, THC combine together. The pinene, it is going to give you a bit of focus and energy. The beta caryophyllin should give a little bit of a calm to the effects of the other terpenes. The remaining terpenes, a little bit of linalool, limoline, hemoline, and terpinoline I mentioned, they should combine together to give a little bit of a nice relaxing background to the effects that you experienced. 
Now, this should be really just a strain for you to enjoy with Jonathan and his stories. For more information on all things medical cannabis, be sure to check us out at CanvasExpertMD.com. We're also available on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under Canvas Expert MD. Now I suggest you pick up some of the sweet joy and joy Jonathan and his stories with uh, I Want. I want, I desire, I need, I require your love, your love to ease my heart. Desire, I need, I require your love, your love to take me higher. And I'm Wendy Love Edge. And this is Mile High News. So Candace, what article do you have for us this week? Man, I've got an article that just makes me so upset. Um, There was an armed car company that sued California Sheriff FBI for highway robbery of a dispensary cap. Highway robbery? Yes, like... uh, Okay, so they're actually waiting for these cars, these armored trucks, to Uh pull off with the cash from dispensaries of legal state and and picking them off as they go away with the cash. So, you know, it's a difficult time in in cannabis business because the banking is all messed up, right? So these trucks probably have a lot of cash. Oh, yeah, over a million dollars of cash was stolen. So when you say picking them off, you mean someone is stopping them and taking the cash. Who's doing that? Yes, the sheriffs are actually doing it. The FBI and the sheriffs are getting together. Um, There was actually five incidences of this same armored armored truck. Uh And three of them were in San Bernardino, California. And then two of them were in Kansas. Wow. So the sheriff, the police, the FBI... They are taking legal dispensary, state legal dispensary cash. And what happens to the cash? Well, I was reading into this because we always know you got to follow the money. Like, Mm -hmm. why would they be doing this? 
<laughs> and it turns out that after everything's said and done, 80% of the funds go back to the sheriff department to spend as they please. Whoa, wait. So the sheriff department gets to keep what might be 80% of a million dollars or yes, however to much money. Please. Yes. Whoa. So how is this legal? I don't well, understand. Uh, right now it is federally illegal still. And most people don't realize that. Most people are like, oh, I'm from a legal state and this won't affect me. Yes, it can affect you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are running a legal business and the sheriffs or whoever is the law in your county, mm -hmm. those sees fit and they get, and I guess in cahoots with the FBI in this instance, that's what's going on. And they mm -hmm. decide they want to come get your money. They can, it's legal. Not one of them got a ticket. Nobody went to jail. They just took the cash. So they pulled them over for no reason, no ticket, no taking them off to jail, just took the cash from them. Yes. <laughs> and so now, thank God, they are suing California and hopefully they will win because this is wrong. And hopefully they will open their eyes to why we need stuff like the Safe Banking Act mm -hmm. to help because these cannabis businesses are very, um, out in the open when it comes to people being able to just go in and rob them like they are full of cash right. because they can't put it in a bank it's still federally illegal right they're kind of sitting ducks i mean going into the dispensary you know you have to press a doorbell usually and show your card and they're very careful it feels like you're a criminal as a patient right. going in there and this right. is probably part of the reason why um, oh, yeah. so when do you think we'll be able to safely run legal cannabis businesses when I believe when it federally legalizes, like it's about mm, time right. over uh, half of our states are legal now. Mm -hmm. And they keep saying, well, if your state so chooses, you can be legal. But then they're counteracting that by sending the FBI in to bust you. Like that's not legal. That's right. That's not, not really leaving it to the states when yes. the FBI or the federal government steps in and takes right. people's cash. My gosh. Yes. So what can we do to change this? As citizens of the well, US, can, what can we do? Right, we can definitely write our senators, write, find out who represents you. Then just go to whorepresentsme.gov, I believe it is, and find out the senators and everybody in that area that represents you. And write them a letter letting them know that you are for cannabis and that you want um, things to change, you want the, federally it federally to be legal you want your state to make changes so that you can have cannabis as an option for your medicine in your area um, right. that's what it's going to take and right now over 50 percent of americans are all for cannabis some yeah. sort of legalization right so, uh, yeah most people are for it and uh unfortunately their representatives aren't necessarily representing their their voice but right. we can or, always use our voice, you know? Right. Or the, the people aren't stepping up and writing the senators and they're mm -hmm. like for it, but they're scared to say that they're for it. Like they might get backlash from their family or they're scared the cops are going to target them because they're speaking out for cannabis. And mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you, I've been doing this for a while now and I have not been targeted by the cops. So it is not illegal for you to speak about cannabis and being you know, being for it. It's only illegal in an illegal state. Now, in a place where it's legal, then yeah, you can smoke it. But a lot of people like me that are still in an illegal state, they're just scared to speak out. And we've got to raise our voice and, and to make a change. That's the only way it's going to happen. Well, thanks so much, Candace, for reporting on this. It's really important that everyone knows about it so they can raise their voice and do something about it. For sure, for sure. Until next time, I'm Candace Dyer, and this is Mile High News with the Winnie Love Edge Show. Stay lit, everyone. Miss mm -hmm. Teddy here with your Food is Medicine Minute. This episode, we are talking about how we can make our favorite foods a little bit healthier. And for one, we can start with changing our oils, flowers, and um, dressings. For example, just substituting your sour cream 
with low fat Greek yogurt, you are saving 300 calories. Um, poach your fish and chicken and eggs. Roast, bake, and grill your meats and vegetables. Try steaming your fish and your vegetables as well. Use lean meats. Skim the fat off the top of your soups. Whatever fat comes up on the top of your soups, skim the fat on the top of that. Stay away from frying. Um, frying is one of the worst things you can do for your health. Believe it or not, when you fry food, you are adding 200 calories per serving. For more information on food as medicine, please feel free to contact me at Learn From Teddy on Facebook. Thank you. Well, what a great show it's been. Uh, do you have any final thoughts, Brandon, about eating what you like and keeping it healthy? You know, I, I do. I, I really want to remind you that your body is, you got to remember that it's fuel that you're eating and you, you got to treat your body like it's a furnace, you know? So if you wake up in the morning, you got to have a nice breakfast, lunch, dinner, even some snacks in between there. If you're trying to stick to a diet and trying to lose some weight or just feel better, you got to eat, you got to get those things done. And I also remind you as well, don't eat out as much. Try to have those meals at home and plan your week as much as you can. I understand people are so busy. And if you got kids or if you got a busy life, we understand this. But um, a big part of your day and having all that energy that you need to conquer your day, it, it, it lies right there in your diet and in your food. So um, take that seriously and um, and make sure that you're prepping and eat. You know, Wendy, you were talking about this. We got it. You have to eat a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, my final thoughts are don't starve yourself. Eat what you like. Uh, listen to Dr. Egypt's advice. She talked about pairing certain foods with others, what, what really works with the body. And you can investigate that further as well. Um, but yeah, you know, it, I remember one time being on this diet that was so restrictive. I, I kept myself really restricted for like three months and then went crazy because I couldn't, right. you know, I just couldn't, I was craving all these yeah, things that I really enjoy. Yeah. They crave those things. And there might mm -hmm. be other underlining things that why is your body craves that, but yeah, right. you're, you're holding back. And at a certain point, the levy is going to break. Yes, and exactly. I'm going to eat the whole sleeve of Oreos if I don't have an Oreo. <laughs> yes. You know? I'm going to buy the biggest bag of Cheetos I can find, um, you know, or, yeah. um, or things like, you know, pizza or, you know, there's ways that you can make it healthier and still enjoy it. So really, like Brandon said, plan ahead and think it through. And, and when you want to have that splurge, go and do it. And yes. then, and then get, get back on with generally day to day, keeping it a little healthier. Exactly. And remember, it's always a marathon, not a sprint. So just because mm -hmm. you ate a salad on Tuesday, <laughs> doesn't mean <laughs> you can pick out the rest of the week. You know, it's, you got to make sure that your, your entire diet, it really reflects on what you want it to, what you want to feel and how you want to feel. And, and it's not just a salad, it's, it's vegetables, it's fruits, and it's staying away uh, from some of those things that you know are bad if you're using them or, or eating them every day. Right, for sure. Well, and I also want to mention we have a new sponsor, the Bomb Cannabis Body Care. It's an award-winning topical line from Oregon, and uh, they have a Facebook page, and uh, we're really excited to have them. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, have a great week, everyone. Bye. The Wendy LaVette Show is sponsored in part by... Karis Healthcare, The Relevant App, Lit Premium Smoking Supplies, 131 Inclusion Gallery, Irie Bliss Wellness, The Bomb Cannabis Body Care, Lindsay Camp and Synergy One Lending. <laughs>